Well, hello everybody. Doug Rucker here with DougRuckerSchool.com and DougRuckerStore.com. And got a few things today that I want to talk to you about roof cleaning. So I got five tips for roof cleaning that I think will help you out a lot. So stay tuned for that coming up next. Okay, guys, on tip number one, I want to talk to you a little bit about moss and lichen that can form on a roof. Um, you want to make sure that you're setting your customer's expectation that that is not going to be removed when you're cleaning a roof. We always explain to them that that will still be there, but all of it will have turned white. And we explain that this is the bleach that is killing that algae that is clean, uh, killing that moss and that lichen, um, and it's going to turn it white. So uh, once it does that, that means it's pretty much dead. It's just going to take a little bit of time for those roots that have grown into the shingles to loosen up. And with subsequent rainfall and wind, um, it will all loosen up and be removed. But we never promise a time frame of how long that will take. I kind of explained to the customer, you know, it didn't get there overnight, so it's not going to come off overnight. And that's just kind of a nice way to say, I'm, hey, I'm sorry you didn't maintain your roof, but um, it, it, it would cause damage if we tried to use pressure to remove that because those roots to that moss and lichen are still attached to the shingle grit. Um, so you just want to give it time to loosen up and release on its own. It's kind of like a weed. If you try to pull a weed up from the ground that's alive and the roots just kind of pull all that dirt up versus if you've killed the weed with Roundup or some other type of weed killer and then you go to pull it, it just kind of slithers straight up um, because the roots are not grasping onto anything anymore. So just remember to always set their expectations um, we let them know with subsequent rainfall and when it will eventually come off, but we have no clue as to how long that will take. Um, it could take several months. Uh, it could take two or three rainfalls, hard storms, but that's what you need is really hard rainfall for it to come off. Um, but we don't use pressure on roof, so that's why we have to let it come off and let Mother Nature uh, do its work. So make sure you set their customer expectations first both in writing and verbally to uh, let them know that. Okay, guys, uh, tip number two is your spraying technique. Uh, this is probably one of the most important things that I teach and have been teaching for years is not to flood a roof. You don't want it running like this. Um, you just need a nice, moist, medium type coat you don't need it running off of the roof. It just, the, shing, the full shingles just need to be wet um, and, and kind of moist. If you get it too thick, it's going to actually take longer because bleach needs oxygen in order to work. So that means that the roof surface, the bleach, and the outdoor air, the oxygen, needs to work together. And so if it's too thick, then it's not going to work very well until it starts evaporating a little bit to where all of that can work together. So that's the most important thing. And that's one of the things that I see um, is one of the biggest mistakes is people just flooding a roof and they're using high volume type equipment like gas machines. Um, you just don't need that. When we use our 10 gallon per minute king slinger, we're actually using uh, two gallon per minute tips. And in this picture here, where I am spraying the roof, I'm using a two gallon per minute tip. So it helps me control the amount of solution that I'm putting on the roof. It helps me save solution. Um, so when you get it to where it starts running off of a roof like this, then you basically need to stop and let it soak in before you continue spraying again. Um, it's okay to have drips coming off of a roof, but you don't want it flooding like it's been raining or something. That, that's just way too much solution. So get the solution onto the roof, let it do its job, 
give it time to dwell and start changing the color of that algae. And uh, you'll conserve uh, not only bleach, you'll save on profits. Um, you'll limit the risk of plant damage because, because you've got just drips coming down versus um, it just pouring off of that roof. So practice your spray technique on roofs that are very easy to walk or out in your driveway. And what you're looking for is you're just looking for it not to start running and flooding off of a roof. Little drip runs are okay because you can stop and let it, like I said, let it soak in, but you just don't need it flooding down off of a roof um, because that's just a waste. And also using foamers, I mean, that, that makes a great um, dog and pony show. It looks cool, but again, it, it doesn't really do anything for the cleaning aspect, um, doesn't really do anything for the stick to the roof. Because if you've got the right spray technique, then even whether you're using a surfactant or not, and I'm a big believer in using surfactants because I just believe it helps in the cleaning. But if you've got the right spray technique and control uh, how much you're putting onto the roof, then you don't need all that other stuff. You don't need high volume machines. You don't need foamers, things of that nature. So just practice and make sure the shingles get a nice little moist coat to where they're wet but they're not flooding off of the roof. Okay, guys, make sure that if you're, uh, if you're getting value out of this um, and it's helping you, be sure to hit that subscribe button and then hit that bell. Um, that'll help you get notifications anytime I come out with a video that could be useful to you, um, something educational that may help you. Then also hit that like button and then leave me a comment or a question if I can help you. I try to respond to all questions and all comments as soon as I possibly can. But uh, again, hit that subscribe, uh, hit the bell so that you get notifications and then give me a like or a comment. So tip number three, we're going to talk about property protection. Uh, we use the Tyvac. Tyvac is house wrap that is used for helping to insulate buildings when they build them. Sometimes driving down the road, you'll see this going up on uh, buildings. You can get it at Lowe's or Home Depot. Tyvac is great because it breathes, but it doesn't allow moisture through. And so if you use like regular tarps or plastic sheeting, um, and it's very hot outside, you can sometimes cause damage uh, by causing the plants to burn from the inside out if you keep them covered for too long. But whatever you're using, Tyvac, tarps, plastic sheeting, always make sure you're wetting the plants before you cover them and then make sure that you uh, wet them again uh, afterwards. Uh, we use it to cover just about all plants. Sometimes really hardy bushes we won't um, cover just because we're controlling our spray technique and I've, we've got the experience to do that. And so we just keep it wet if it gets a little drips on it. But um, it's a good idea if you're new to make sure you're covering everything with the Tyvac. Again, uh, air conditioning units, plants, generators, anything where that bleach can drip onto or get mist on it. Um, you want to make sure you're protecting and covering properly wood decks, wood fences, wood fences. We always wet before we start spraying. Um, even if you get a little mist on it, um, that can cause problems. One of the things you've got to be really aware of is if you're spraying um, off of a corner of a house, what's it bouncing off of and what's it going to hit? And so at my school, I always teach people, you know, property protection is basically this boiled down into a, a nutshell. Know where that bleach is going, you know, what it's going to hit, know what it can do when it gets there, and then protect those surfaces, protect those uh, areas where that bleach is going to hit. So very important, know where the bleach is going when you're spraying, whether it's bouncing off of a roof or bouncing off a house or whatever. Um, know what type of damage it can cause, like spotting wood or um, hitting plants that you may not think it could hit. Um, any type of equipment, cameras, TVs, doors, doorknobs, electronic keypads, all that kind of stuff. You really have to sit back and visualize and, and, and know where you're spraying, 
what can happen when it bounces off of something or wind takes it or whatever. So that's uh, that's basically property protection in a nutshell and just protect everything that you think needs protected and maybe some things that, you know, you may have doubts about, go ahead and protect it. Very important too, guys, once you're done uh, cleaning in an area like on this roof where it had no gutters, um, make sure that you give all the plants a final rinse, um, especially on the foliage. Prior to uh, starting to clean, you should always verify that the roots of plants have had plenty of water. Just get those things filled up, even to where it's just ponding. On this job, we have had rain for a week, so we didn't have to worry too much about the roots. We knew they were pretty well saturated, but always give all of the plants a final rinse. Don't wait until the end of the job to go around and do that. Do that when you're done with that area. Just really drench them and uh, in case any overspray or anything got on it. Of course, you want to be do doing that before, during um, before and during the uh, roof cleaning portion of that area. And then, of course, like I said, afterwards, just make sure um, that you give them all a, a good rinse, uh, all the foliage on the plants to make sure that uh, all of any, any chance of any mist or any overspray has gotten off the plants. Okay, guys, tip number four uh, is using guns versus ball valves. I use a ball valve. The reason I like the ball valve is because it does not cause restriction. So the distance that I'm spraying is not um, affected because there's no restriction. When you're using a gun, there's restriction. So you're going to lose just a tad bit of distance. Some people it's not noticeable, but for me it is. Um, I, see, I just like the ball valves also because they last longer. Um, but they're not quite as what I would call safe as using a gun. Uh, when you're using a gun because it's got a trigger, when you let go of it, it immediately stops spraying. So if you were to drop it, say you're on a roof or even going around a house and you were to drop it, it's going to stop spraying. If you have a ball valve like what I use and you do that, then it's going to keep spraying as it rolls down the roof. So if you're just starting out, I'd probably recommend using a gun until you get you know, used to controlling the gun, um, all of that type of thing. Um, but then as you gain experience, you might want to switch to a ball valve or if you're just doing a house wash or something where you're not concerned about it you know, dropping where you can just pick it up real quick, turn it off if you need to, um, those types of things. But I prefer the ball valve. A lot of guys prefer the trigger gun. It's just a personal preference thing. It's not a right or wrong thing. Um, it's just what you feel most comfortable with and what you can adequately operate um, safely. So either a ball valve or a gun, either way is going to work. I just prefer the ball valve guns for soft washing. Um, there have been occasions on certain jobs, commercial or whatever, where I just felt, okay, I think I need to use a trigger gun because I need, I need to have a little bit more uh, quick response when I want to stop spraying. So just letting go of the trigger would do that versus um, having to take my hand, put it up on the ball valve and turn it off or whatever. So those are the types of guns that are available and uh, either one is fine. Just choose what you think you're going to feel more comfortable with and it's going to be safer for you. Okay, guys, uh, before I get into the last tip, once again, don't forget, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell so that you get notifications and then hit that like button. And most of all, leave me a comment, leave me a question so I can help you out. Um, if I can, I, like I said before, try to answer all these questions um, as I can. Uh, sometimes I can respond rather quickly. Sometimes it takes me a day or two, just depend on how busy we are. But tip number five is the equipment needed. You're going to need a Kingslinger soft wash system. <laughs> just kidding. You don't have to have this one. Um, but you need what I call a dedicated pump. A lot of people refer to them as a soft wash pump. So soft wash dedicated pump. And basically that means some type of pump 
that's going to get you a mixture higher than what you can get out of uh, downstreaming. So just remember a dedicated pump starts with a pump up sprayer or a little trigger sprayer, hand sprayer. Um, that's what a dedicated pump is because it allows you to put your mixture in um, that pump up sprayer at whatever you want, 10%, 20%, 30%, 40%, however you mix it. So a dedicated soft wash pump is basically a pump up sprayer on steroids is what I call it because it allows you to um, draw your mix out of larger tanks um, and get the percentage, dial the percentage in that you want to by using some type of metering system. So if you're on a limited budget, I think a lot of guys go to Northern Tool or Tractor, Tractor Supply and they'll get the little tank that's got the little electric pump um, hooked up to it. And that's fine to get you by. It's just going to take you a little bit longer. But, hey, you're going to get the job done and you're going to make some money. Um, and then as you build your business, you can go to, um, you know, the, the, the larger units that, that allow you to work faster and be more productive. Um, these dedicated pumps come in all various types like, uh, air diaphragm, which is what I use with the air compressor. Um, I've had booster pumps. I've had 12 volt. I've had gas operated machines. In fact, still have a gas operated machine, but I don't ever use it for roofs. I use it mainly for large commercial buildings, um, places where I need to get large volume on surfaces on large surfaces quicker and faster. Um, and I've budgeted in for using that extra bleach mix, but, um, I've had all of those before 12 volt booster gas operated air diaphragm. I've had them all two and three different times. I've just come back to the air diaphragm because to me, they're, they're the most reliable and most dependable and have less issues. You're going to have issues out of any type of soft wash dedicated pump that you get. You're going to have some nuances, but um, the air diaphragm seems to be uh, the least amount for me. And so we sell this King Slinger um, that has the mixing system on it. We also sell all flow air diaphragm pumps, Yamada, whatever you want. But I really like the King Slinger because it's a small footprint. It does everything these other brands do. Um so that's what you need, some type of dedicated pump. You can't clean a roof with downstreaming. I don't recommend using an X-Jet because you're just going to go through a lot of bleach and you're going to go through it fast and you run the risk of uh, if you use just a regular X-Jet, it's just a lot of pressure and a lot of mist. So you've got that mist going everywhere. If you use the modified downstream um, version that we sell, then you run the risk of flooding a roof as well as using way too much bleach um, and going through it pretty fast. So, but that's the equipment you need. You need some type of dedicated pump with your tanks and things of that nature. If you have any questions about that, um, feel free to just leave it in the comments or um, uh, comments or questions in the comment section here on YouTube. So thanks so much guys for watching. I hope this has been helpful for you guys. Um, just a few quick little tips. Don't forget, I, I, this will be a longer, uh, there will be a longer version of this on my online school for my online students, but I just wanted to put something out for YouTubers so that y'all could get um, some little quick tips that I thought maybe would help you. But don't forget, I have monthly training here in Houston every month. Next one's coming up June 14th and 15th. That's the hands-on training. Um, got three or four already signed up coming in from out of town. Got one local guy that's attending. Um, and then also I have the online video school that is, I just think, the best value out there. Over 250 training videos on there. Um, and uh, along with the classes of roof cleaning, house washing, concrete cleaning, and property protection. So thanks so much guys for watching. Hope it's been helpful. And uh, like I said, leave me a question or a comment if there's anything I can help you with.